Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look back at our good old friend, Battlefield 1. <clears throat> See what it was, what it became, and, uh, well, Battlefield 5 is coming out, so I'm probably not going to play Battlefield 1, because Battlefield 5 feels like an enhanced version of Battlefield 1. So, Battlefield 1, I would say... It was a little more of a casual Battlefield game. There's definitely a lack of customization in the game, which I think hurt it in the beginning. It definitely hurt it in the beginning when there was no DLCs at all. When there was just a vanilla game, I generally think it uh, didn't really do the game well to not have as much customization as a normal Battlefield game. And you felt less unique, yet the squad play felt so much better in this game than Battlefield 4. My friends and I, this is what I'm going to say, Battlefield 4 I spent a lot of time in, Battlefield 1 I spent a lot of time in, Battlefield 1 I spent more time playing with friends than I did on Battlefield 4, and I, you know, I had some good friendships on this game, I had met my friend Fry, I still sometimes talk with Fry, we played Battlefield 1, Ragnar and I have played Battlefield 1, we made videos together, my friend Gossmer, Gossmer, I played Battlefield 1 with, and we had some good times too, you know, me and Rag and Goss, all, all three of us. Sometimes we'd have more people, like, I know a guy named Adam, and Adam and I played Battlefield 1. So, you know, there's good times on Battlefield 1. I learned how to fly a plane in video games in Battlefield 1 really well. I mean, I, I could fly planes in Kerbal Space Program, right? Never built into a successful SSTO. But I can fly planes in Kerbal Space Program. Battlefield 1. God. It's like the plane flying in that game was close to on point as I would ever want in a Battlefield 1 game. And I think this game really shined with the DLCs. What I liked about the DLCs in this game was that they took risks to being unique. Okay? The first DLC, I call it the French one because that was the armies, you know, the French that they introduced. The French one had a feel of like you want some world war one maps we'll give you four maps they all kind of look the same they all kind of feel the same but it's world war one right with the trenches and the fields and there were they even felt unique you know there was the one with all the pillboxes on the hill and like the little tiny river there was the one with the wheat fields where if you played front lines it lasted forever and it looked like the moon by the time you were done then you had Verdun with all the fire everywhere. Verdun, I think, was a really good map because it just, it did what Operation um, Locker in Battlefield 4 didn't do for me, which was, it did, it made a map that, you know, was just head on, pure gunfights, and I, it did it good for me. And, you know, Fort DeVox was okay. I think it was just because that map was great. I didn't really like it. And then, you got some, one of my favorite game DLCs ever, which was uh, They Shall Not Pass, the Russian one. That one added like freaking six maps that were all good. Um, except for the one in uh, the Kremlin. I didn't really like that one, but I don't like urban maps in general. But those maps were so good. I remember when that first came out, I think I doubled my playtime just playing those six maps on Battlefield 1. And then, of course, the other two DLCs, or three DLCs, you know, the ranked mode, like Rainbow Six Siege Battlefield 1, absolutely failed miserably. Not worth it at all. And then the other two, which was the Amphibious Warfare, and the last one, which I think added large-scale maps. I didn't even play a lot of the last one. And those ones were okay. I really liked the Amphibious maps. That had released my favorite map, which I don't even remember the Battlefield 1 map names, but it was the one with, like, the island in the middle that had, like, five objectives on it. It was basically 0% land, all percent water. And Battlefield 1, I really think that they did balancing the guns right. Every gun felt unique. You just couldn't customize it. And that hindered it. If you could customize them, even with like suppressor versus non-suppressor, or um, extended mag versus something like a hollow point, or armor piercing round, or something, right? Maybe um, increase fire rate, but reduce hip fire. Anything like that, attachments that add a dynamic to the game, I get that it's a World War One game, but it still has to be fun. And what, playing alone, it sucked miserably. 
Except for They Shall Not Pass. I feel like They Shall Not Pass was just, well, a freaking masterpiece of a DLC. But Battlefield 1, I think, taught us a good lesson. Which is if you make a multiplayer game, if it's too casual, if you have nothing but Pacific the Casual Gamers playing Battlefield 1, it's not going to do as well as you would expect because it's boring after not a long time. After after not a long time, you know. After a short time, it is boring. All right, that game, after the, you know, you explore all the maps, you know, like the sniping points, right? The difference between using a Springfield rifle and a Gavar 98 and a Gavar 95 and a Lee Enfield scoped really didn't matter in the game. I know they were like, oh, they have a kill zone. It's like one shot to the chest. Yeah, one shot to the chest. But it, it really didn't matter because you couldn't, like, there was really only two snipers that had decent kill zones that you could actually use to your advantage. So, and if, you know, of course SMGs and Soul Rivals and Semi-Auto Rivals, they all felt pretty nice, in my opinion. So that was Battlefield 1. I would say the DLC release was really good. I, didn't, I know I didn't talk about the vehicles. I thought that game did vehicles extremely well. Um, Battlefield seems to do vehicles really well, in my opinion. Um, I can't wait to see what Battlefield 5 does. I hope Battlefield 5, you know, just based on the beta, it seems like they took 1 and 4 and fused them together so beautifully. I hope they do it right, man. I really do. But guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. I would love to know, you know, what you thought of Battlefield 1. I think overall, it was a positive experience for me. Um... I definitely wish there was more customization in it. Very simple. I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I'll see you in the next episode, stream, vlog, or steam it post. Of whatever I decide to make.